This is the January 9, 2014 reading from Blossom Goodchild's channeling of the Federation of Light. Narrated by Blossom Goodchild and Joe Pena. Hello. What an interesting week it's been in my inbox. I have, as you know, been asking you to read along with me the many hundreds of emails from people all over the globe expressing the exact same feelings as I put to you in our last communication. You have said that this was our agreement for me to let you know how it is for us down here. And with all respect for you, that's what I felt was needed to be done. So, I did it. I have to say, many, as I did, felt you were dumbfounded by my words, and that they felt you were unable to respond. So, now you've had some time to digest it, with all love in my heart, I wonder what you have to say on what seems to be a very important issue. Dearest soul, our compadre in arms, indeed we were rather spellbound by the outpouring of your heart in our last communication. We have known of the tiredness and difficulties that face those of you upon earth. Yet, in truth, until picking up on the exactness of your energy that accompanied your wording, we had not fully understood how the programming was such a detriment to the human condition. It was this that took us aback. Wow! You see, I just consider you to be so intelligent, so knowledgeable, that I always presume you do know these things. Surely you must have had a clue as to our situation. Of course, we are aware of certain misdemeanors that you have to deal with. Yet, due to the fact that we have not experienced it ourselves, in truth, we really had not adjusted our radar to the fact of how low and indeed how destroying to the soul it can be to have to reside within such densities. We really are trying our best. Our concern, as you'll have gathered from emails, being that by becoming so tired and weary, we're not fulfilling our destiny, because our light is not as bright as we would sometimes like it to be. This we have understood also. Yet we would say that One's light, although running dim at times, only needs a recharge to regain its fullness. It is not that it will go out altogether, for it cannot. Yet some are concerned that it has, or it will. We are aware that some are feeling this way. And indeed we have not dismissed or put on the back burner your request, Blossom not by any stretch of the imagination. There has been quite a stir caused in hierarchy councils in which we have looked deeply into that which you requested. For it is not an issue that could go ahead without much intensely specific discussion. This I understand. Yet I hope you understand that it was essential that I carried out my role and put the suggestion forward. Naturally, this is completely understood, and as we have stated, we accepted it in great seriousness. There has not yet been an agreement made regarding this matter. That's fair enough. You must do what you consider best for the highest good of all. And is that not what we all should be doing? Indeed. Indeed it is, our friend. Indeed it is. So, where to from here? Let us perhaps uplift your souls by saying that the end is in sight. <laughs> see, I have to laugh, chaps. You see, this is exactly our dilemma. How can I put this? 
I'm just trying to assist. Please know that I'm not having another go at you. Yet by saying the end is inside, only stirs the pot these days. To be honest, we've heard this over and over. And that is what so many folk are getting tired of, because I could say, all talk, no action. I know you're doing your best under the circumstances, yet all this has been said before, for years. So when we hear it now, as lovely as it is, and as meaningful as you mean it to be, well, it's a bit like water off a duck's back. Really, that's how it's become for us. That sort of statement is precisely why the peasants are revolting, sire. So we wonder where that leaves us. Indeed. For in no way do I, or it seems anyone, want these communications to stop. And yet due to nothing happening as yet of what you've said, it has left doubt and weariness. See, like I've said before, it's not that we don't know something will happen. I think the real problem lies in your misconception of what the words soon and imminent mean to us. See, it's a time thing. Perhaps you could talk to us about that from your point of view, you know, to help us understand where you are coming from. You see, Blossom, from our point of view, there simply can be no doubt that the event is to take place. We know it. It is part of the divine plan, and there is no reason at all that can prevent it from taking place. We know it will. We have never doubted it. So in our beings, we're moving toward that moment in time. Okay, let me stop you there. You have no time. We know this. So when is that moment in time for you? What do you mean by moving toward that moment in time? We mean that it is a happening that is to occur at the exact moment when all that is needed to pull this off is in its correct and rightful place. When all is in alignment, as you would say. Exactly. So, is it that you don't know when everything is going to be in place? Yes, indeed. Yet we do know that it is falling into place now. We are showing you a vision of a central magnet and many around it being drawn closer and closer. Then, as they get to a particular position, when they are all in alignment, they suddenly, whoosh, are pulled together at the same time by the strength, by the power of the central magnet, and attach themselves to it. So what we are saying is that until those magnetic pieces are lined up in position, the whoosh cannot happen. Yet, we are happily watching more and more of them, waiting and ready. Metaphorically speaking, of course. So do you see, dearest Blossom, and indeed all souls that are reading these words, from our perspective, you are indeed very close. For we have known that this will take place all along. Yet, perhaps when it was first spoken of, the magnetic pieces were floating way out there in space. When you look at it like that, you can see how much of the plan has come together and why we consider it worthwhile to express the term very soon now and imminent. Because for us, considering where the plan began, it is. Well, thank you. I don't know about for anyone else, yet for me that really helps it indeed does put things into perspective, and I can see at last where you're coming from. 
It, for me, is the best explanation I've heard regarding the when. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yet not dismissing, of course, the fact that an engine booster wouldn't go amiss. To the whole, that's the thing. We're not talking here on a level that can be captured by a couple out walking and they put it up on YouTube. We are talking something pretty huge for confirmation's sake. Just so as you know. We received that loud and clear blossom last time. Good, because that was my intention. As ground crew, and I mention that liberally, we know we are here to be an example of light love. And it's my understanding that the brighter we are able to shine, the quicker those magnets can align. So I think souls are concerned that because of the depletion they feel, they're perhaps hindering the process instead of helping. That's why we're requesting the said boost. I know you said we knew before we came what we were letting ourselves in for. Yet it seems as a collective from the ground crew, there is was the need to let headquarters know that supplies were getting very low. We would say that we understood this. And indeed, as we have said, the matter was not taken lightly and is still ongoing as to delivering to you the supplies needed. This is a team effort, and it is natural that when a group, a very important group of the team, is needing assistance, then it is certainly fitting for those who can to offer service in any manner that seems fitting. We reiterate, the case has definitely not been closed. Thank you. Truly, that is so good to hear. Thank you. Just a query someone had regarding the ground crew. Are we all ground crew, all who are upon Earth? Are we all the strongest of the strong? Or is there a mix of, how do I put it into words, those who volunteered and were chosen and those that just happened to be here, be it through karmic position or whatever? There is indeed a mix. This is why there is much rumbling in the ranks, shall we say. For the strongest of the strong were chosen to step in at this time to see the plan through. Knowing that there were many on Earth that were caught up in the Matrix and have been for eons and certainly have no idea of the rescue team sent in to put an end to it. So yes, Certainly there are some who know now, some who will know, and some who will never know all that has gone on behind the scenes in order to bring the divine plan into its final stages. Yet, know that we speak solely of a particular aspect of the divine plan. For, as enormous as the event is, on all levels, the divine plan shall continue to unfold as love itself unfolds, reaching newer heights, greater heights, higher heights forevermore, as indeed it is designed to do. When you consider that blossom, when you think about that, the possibilities that lie ahead, the knowing that love shall continue to expand in, expand of, expand through, as itself. Well, does it quite simply not blow your mind? If I did try to think about it, it would, so I won't. Guys, thank you. As you probably know, I was a little apprehensive as to what would be said today, and yet my heart, and my sister, <laughs> just told me to trust and go with the flow. But one thing I do know, you don't judge me. For you are of the greatest love, and therefore, judgment does not enter in. And speaking of the greatest love, this is what I, and so many, perhaps in their millions now, 
have for you. I don't know how widespread your messages have become, but I do know that for as long as it makes sense for me to do so, I shall continue forth. Love ya. And indeed, take a moment to breathe and feel the love we have for you, Blossom. And for all, we love you.